great. Welcome everybody. Um, here we are with our uh, first uh, college in Ottawa, uh, South Niagara Chambers um, live stream webinar. Um, and um, uh, with me, I have Sue Mitte and, and Richard Ellis, who are helping out uh, with uh, with this today. And uh, it's a newbie for all of us, so uh, join in and uh, watch all of our mistakes. <laughs> um, all right, shall we uh, proceed to the next slide, and um, we'll go from there. All right. Um, so um, we uh, we uh, this is an introduction to uh, to me, I think, at this point, uh, and, and uh, just to know who you're um, uh, who you're listening to. Uh, my name is Vern Milo, and I am the founder of Growth Associates, and. Um, uh, we uh, basically uh, provide a business advisory service to Niagara businesses in the area of one-on-one -on -one advisory services, uh, management team development, ownership transition, and peer advisory group workshops. Um, th this is important to know from the standpoint that if we're talking about a business operating system, it's nice to have somebody who's actually worked and implemented on a, on a, on a number of them uh, with, uh, with uh, businesses right here in Niagara. So, I'm coming to this with a bit of experience of the uh, of the goods and bads of business operating systems and and how they can all work for you. So um, let's proceed to our agenda right now, and um, let everybody know what uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, first off, we're going to look at a definition for business operating systems, uh, just so that we are all on the same page in terms of what we're talking about. Have a look at what is an operating system, what isn't. Um, identify when one would be needed and, um, and uh, how to identify a good one uh, if you're about to pick one. Um, then, then we're going to look at a, uh, a business operating system, one that I've worked with and uh, that I'm familiar with and uh, wh how it functions and uh, just allow you to do a, sh a uh, little bit of shopping if you're, if you're considering an operating system of your own. Um, lastly, uh, I've got a couple of local applications that we can talk about and uh, we can look at how they were successful or unsuccessful in terms of implementing an operating system. And uh, with regards to questions uh, and comments, uh, please feel free to use the live chat and uh, comment anytime you like and, um, and we'll um, either answer them right away or put them in sequence or something like that. So, but uh, please engage and, um, and bring some questions forward. And uh, hopefully we have a great uh, educational and enriching hour together. All right. So uh, let's take a look at what we have as operating system definitions. I uh, went to Wikipedia and uh, used uh, what they had to say. And quite frankly, I found that it was uh, rather succinct and right to the point. Um, you know, we have uh, things that uh, refer to a standard enterprise-wide collection of business processes. Uh, and uh, the whole idea here is to have a common structure uh, using common principles and common practices to drive your organization to an end goal. Um, key elements to this that I find very important that are also mentioned and embedded in, within this definition is that we're looking for a collection of business processes and business process improvement methodologies. And, and I, I, I'm going to stress this over and over probably throughout this discussion, but really it's important to not only uh, look at managing uh, a strategic development uh, process, but also the implementation of that. And uh, one without the other just doesn't work, obviously. Um, what you can expect to get from an operating system is um, essentially to have daily work focused on the strategic objectives of your company and to do this in an efficient way. All right. So um, we don't have any questions yet on that, so uh, please feel free to, to jump in with any if something comes along. Um, further to our definition, let's look at what an operating system is not. It, 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 this is not a, a, a format of ISO quality approval. Um, certainly a lot of elements you'd find in a, in a quality manual of sorts, uh, but it's not that and I can explain that a little later. Um, it's not an organization chart or a process chart. It's not simply a business plan and uh, it's not a budget forecast. 
Um, it has those elements in it, but it does extend it a little further in a sense that we're again looking at, we're looking at execution of, of a business development strategy and we're also looking at a way of having a continual improvement process within our company. Um, so let's take a look at uh, what we have as, um, as uh, who might need an operating system. Um, uh, personally, I believe everybody should use one because it'll, it'll result in profit improvement and business efficiencies. Um, but if any of these indicators come out within an organization, then an operating system can have a greater impact. Um, one of the things would be to look at uh, an owner of an operation or a CEO of an operation that really has lack of control over their time, lack of control over customers, uh, the company itself, and, and they really feel like the company is running company. Um, another aspect is where we have too many people issues. Those people issues could come from employees, customers, vendors. Um, there could be no follow through by employees when asked to do something that just didn't work out. Um, and it sometimes seems as though everybody's scattered and running in different directions and no one's on the same page. Um, and as well, we've heard it many times, where are all the good people? I can't find good employees to work for me. Um, certainly the profit issue comes up. Um, you know, if somebody feels like they're working so many hours that their pay as, as an owner manager of an operation is less than what they're paying their employees, then obviously there isn't enough money for them, uh, nor for the investment they've put into the organization. Other aspects of an operating system um, can include uh, the fact that, um, um, you know, we have dead growth. <coughs> Another term for that would be living dead. The organization hasn't improved, hasn't really gained uh, significantly in revenues for the last three to five years or something of that nature. And um, the owner manager kind of feels overwhelmed in terms of not knowing what to do next. Um, things seem very complex and uh, they're, they're not really sure what, what should happen. Um, in that sense, nothing may be working and, um, and uh, it feels like we're really skidding on the spot. Um, lastly, one area that I've personally had a lot of success in and watched a lot of success happen is, um, is succession planning. Um, either from wanting to sell a business or transferring the business to uh, offspring, children, uh, relatives, or whatever it might be. Um, and uh, the reason for that is an operating system is set up to have the whole organization fulfilling the objectives of the company as opposed to one individual who feels like they're carrying the whole load. Um, so I put together a graphic here as the next one that kind of talks about, um, uh, you know, how to pick an operating system that would make a lot of sense. Um, and before that, let me take a peek here. We have a question from uh, Susie in Vancouver. Um, it says, uh, hi Vern, um, how small of a company can afford to adopt a business operating system? Um, thank you for your, for, your, uh, for your inquiry here, Susie. Um, you know, it, it, um, it really applies best for medium-sized organizations. Uh, typically, large corporations already have an operating system in place to an extent. Um, but um, really, if you're a three-person company, um, an operating system becomes very simple to, to implement, um, but also as effective. And uh, I think that'll come out through the discussion in the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, but certainly, I can't see any business not functioning without having an operating system in place, even if it's a one-person operation. Um, so let's go back to our graphic that we have up here that talks about an operating system. Um, you know, I, I, I think the, 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 the format here and the, and the sequence makes a lot of sense and should be, uh, and should be carried out. Um, we need to understand the company and what its makeup is. Um, what are its strengths and weaknesses? Where does it fit within the organization? And um, from that, we can establish a, a vision 
Um, we can we can look at where we want to go with, uh, with with this company and what do we have as a clear vision for this company in five years or even ten years for that matter. Um, next, it requires to translate that vision into a strategy of what is my roadmap? What do I need to do in the next three years, even in the next twelve months, in order to implement and have that vision become a reality? Um, lastly, and very importantly. Uh, it's a question of taking that strategy and finding a way and means of implementing it so it does actually happen. Um, so, um, what we could do at this point in time is um, take a look at a sample business operating system that um, th that um, I've um, I, I've seen to be very effective. I, I'm not promoting it as being the only one around, but uh, it's one that I'm familiar with, so I'm happy to talk about it. And uh, it'll provide everybody with a good idea of what you can find within an operating system or what you should look for. Um, so what we have here is one that's put together by a fellow by the name of Gino Wickman. Uh, I think he's in Michigan or somewhere like that. And uh, he calls uh, his system Traction, or uh, Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS for short. And within it, he talks about six foundational elements that need to be uh, in place for any operating system to work. Um, he'll, um, he'll take a look at any organization and uh, you know, provide a scorecard on where everybody stands with regards to these six pillars. And uh, a typical company might score 30, 40 percent on 100 um, a, uh, a at the onset. And, and, um, Throughout the implementation of the operating system and, and its uh, and its rollout, um, th that number can go from 70 to 80 percent. I've actually personally seen uh, 86, uh, 90 percent as numbers that uh, companies have achieved in terms of their effectiveness in each one of these areas. Um, so uh, the uh, six areas that he has in question uh, relate to uh, the vision of where the organization wants to go. Um, what data system we have to collect this information. Um, how do we measure our people and how do we find the right people to work for our company? Um, what are our processes? What are our fundamental processes by which we want to operate the organization? Um, he also uh, addresses uh, something called issues and, uh, and we'll cover that in a second but it's basically all the barriers and, and obstacles that are in the way of, uh, of, uh, of, of creating an operation that works for you. And, and lastly, uh, a as we pointed out in the slide prior, is uh, we definitely need a solid methodology to implement and one that works and one that makes everybody accountable to what their responsibilities are. And of course, he calls that traction and uh, hence the name of the, uh, of the book and, uh, and his uh, operation. Um, so let's take a look at uh, vision as, uh, as the first one. Um, you know, if we all think back to, um, to uh, uh, successful entrepreneurs, successful business owners, um, virtually every one of them has a really clear vision of where they want to take their company. And the better ones really communicate that well. They communicate it well to the people working for them. They communicate it well to investors and, and uh, the general public. Um, so, so it's a very important element. The other thing is once we've established a vision, uh, definitely there's no reason to keep it secret from our, from our organization. And in fact, it's the opposite. It's very important for an organization to know exactly where the company wants to go and where it's headed. Um, w only with that can we have razor sharp focus where everybody's understanding where we're going and all their energies are in that direction. You know, sometimes the analogy points to uh, a, um, uh, the sun, for example. Um, you know, the sun uh, uh, sends a huge amount of energy to the earth every day. Uh, and you know, uh, the strongest effect it could have on us is maybe uh, walking around with our shirt off for an afternoon getting a sunburn. But we all know that if we take a magnifying glass, that, that might only be, uh, you know, four inches in diameter. And, and, and we take the energy of the sun from that four inch disc and focus it onto one spot, we can actually start a fire. Um, so 
you know, that analogy applies really well in the sense that if you have everybody in your organization raise their sharp focus on what you have as your objective and your goal, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Right. Next thing we can talk about is people. And, um, you know, I, I won't blame millennials, but I think uh, uh, we find more and more today uh, business owners saying, I can't find good people. Um, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a digression here um, is that, uh, you know, we live in Niagara and uh, we uh, have the, uh, the great opportunity of having two great post-secondary institutions, uh, Brock University and Niagara College. Interestingly, uh, you know, their, uh, their full-time enrollment uh, adds up to like 30,000 students. Um, you know, it's interesting that we complain about not finding people when we have 30,000 students of which probably a quarter or, or, even, uh, or even a third are graduating every year. Um, you know, so, so here we have uh, uh, 8,000 students graduating every year. Uh, even if we take the top 10%, uh, we, we have close to 1,000 students to pick from who graduated in the top 10% of their class that could come and work for us. Um, we really need to take more advantage, I think, of these post-secondary institutions to find the A players that we have living in Niagara and, and leaving only because they're finding a job elsewhere. But if we take a look at wanting to attract A players to our company, um, we, we need to do one very important thing. We need to identify what are right people. Um, what do we define as the right person for our company? Uh, what is the right person that suits our company's culture? A and uh, what's the right person that, uh, th that, that's really going to blend in with our team? Um, a good operating system will be able to identify those people. They'll come up with a, a statement of core values of, of what our company believes in. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's the, uh, uh, you know, what we sell, how we sell it, and why we come to work every day. Uh, it'll be that why question that gets answered uh, within, within your core values. And, and with that, we can take a look at the team that we have and figure out whether A, we have the right people, and if B, they're in the right seat. Um, you may have a right person who's really not uh, carrying out the right role. They, 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 they should be in this, or this part of the organization as opposed to that. Um, and, and as well, when you're going out looking for the right people, it's much easier to find them once you identify who they are. Um, you know, the next thing we can look at is when we're dealing with organizing people within, within, a, within a company, we often have an organization chart. And, um, uh, you know, you can almost uh, call it an accountability chart in my mind because if within each organizational role you identify what are the four, five, six key responsibilities of that role, um, th then you have very clearly stated accountabilities for every person in your company. Um, when you simplify an accountability chart, there are only three roles that pop up. You know, and uh, you can call them, a, as, as this next slide shows, fine, grind, and mind. Um, uh, you know, it's a funny term, but, you know, finding, we need to find the, the, the customers, uh, the prospects first, and we need to convert them into being customers. Uh, the grind uh, manager uh, has to deliver. They have to, they have to create an operation that's able to deliver properly. And uh, lastly, the person who's minding uh, the organization is looking after cash flow and all the support and administration that's required for the find and the grind people to do their job. So really, in simple terms, we need a person who's responsible for each one of those roles. They, they may have a whole bunch of people working under them, but at the end of the day, um, what we really need is, is, um, is to have one person who's responsible to make each one of those things happen. Um, naturally, uh, they would be reporting to a CEO and, um, and, and we do it that way. Um, Eleven. So, um, let's take a look at uh, another aspect that we have within this, um, this chart and uh, it talks about data. Um, you know, um, 
interesting that's, uh, that, that's said is that, uh, you know, what gets measured what gets, is what gets done, and uh, what gets compensated uh, gets done again. Um, and, and it's so true. Uh, human nature is that uh, whatever we think we're being measured by is what we want to make sure we're, uh, we're, we're actually uh, carrying out. Um, if your data collection uh, system um, has a, a, a short list of key performance indicators that, that really uh, give you a great idea of the health of your company, uh, then, uh, then that's ideal. Um, and uh, very important um, for many aspects. Uh, who have a simple list of KPIs. Um, an owner can now um, spend more time away from the day-to-day -day operations and, um, and, um, and, and take a look at what's going on from, from 5,000 feet as opposed to being involved in day-to-day -day things. Um, okay, let's take a look at another aspect. Um, the, the, um, the Wickman calls them issues um, on uh, slide uh, 13 here. We, um, you know, I, I, the, the issue thing comes up, I, I like to say we're, we're uh, you know, very similar to a New Year's resolution where uh, somebody creates a vision and a goal of what they want to achieve, uh, no different than in a business. And uh, what happens with most New Year's resolutions, as we know, is they fail probably within the first month or so. And they fail because some obstacle comes up. You know, I, my New Year's resolution could be to go to the gym uh, uh, twice a week, uh, but um, all of a sudden there's a major snowstorm and I can't get my car to the gym on Tuesday. Um, well, it now makes it hard to get back into the mode of going to the gym and some other obstacle comes up and uh, all of a sudden we're not going to the gym anymore. Um, it, it really no different uh, within an organization. But if you're addressing these issues within an organization and you're discussing them with everybody to find out, well, this happened, this was an obstacle, we didn't predict it, uh, how do we circumvent it, how do we get around it, and how can we now get back on track to achieving that goal that we have set for ourselves? Um, uh, you know, all, all of a sudden it becomes very impactful and, and we're able to get around those barriers and those obstacles. Um, so again, so again here, it's a matter of listing what they are, it's a matter of predicting ones that might show up. <clears throat> and um, it, it's important to identify them, to identify what the real issue is, the underlying issue that may be, uh, that may be there all along, um, to discuss it, and uh, to have everybody come up with a plan as to how they'd like to get around it. Um, so, once you do that, all of a sudden those issues can go away and you get back onto goal setting. Uh, we have another, um, uh, another uh, question here, so let's, uh, let's see if we can't go to that one. Uh, this is from Dizzy, and uh, how long can it take for an owner to see any real progress? Uh, very good question. Um, you almost start seeing things immediately if you employ a good business operating system. Um, where it's going to have uh, a high impact on, on your bottom line, I, I, I'd say uh, by the second year. Um, and uh, thereafter, uh, you can have some dramatic uh, changes to your profits and, and your organization in general. Um, yeah, it isn't something that happens overnight. You can't uh, put it in place and within one month start to see spectacular results. Um, it, it's a, it, it is a process and uh, it, it does require implementation of a lot of elements and uh, that in and of itself can take some time. Hope that answers the question there, Dizzy, and if, um, if it doesn't then uh, please, uh, please ask it another way or uh, ask again. Um, okay, let's take a look at slide 14 here. Um, <coughs> we're, we're, we're talking about our process now whereby, um, you know, rather than a complex procedures manual that you would find in an ISO 9000 uh, manual where uh, there, there could very well be 200, 300 pages of, uh, of procedures, um, probably best looking at what are your five or six or seven key processes in your organization and making sure that those are, are actually listed. 
um, and and um, and uh, providing a, a clear description of how that process should be carried out, making sure that everybody in the company understands it and they're following it. Um, so it's a question of having a limited number of, uh, of, of elements that you, want to, that you want to follow very carefully and make sure that they're followed by everybody. Mm -hmm. um, next slide, we see 15 talking about traction. And again here, um, you know, what, what is often said is that, uh, um, you know, vision uh, w w without implementation is hallucination. And in many ways it is. Um, you know, it doesn't do any good to uh, pay for a high-priced consultant to provide you a lovely business plan and a strategy and so forth. Uh, read it over carefully, get very enthusiastic about it and put it on the shelf and let it gather dust and don't implement. Far better to have a weaker strategy and a strong implementation than a strong strategy and no implementation. Um, so we, so we take a look at this in terms of, um, of this particular uh, uh, operating system and the six foundations that it has. Uh, you know, we're dealing with a crystal clear and shared vision. Uh, we're, we're dealing with a team of right people that are, that are in the right seats. Um, we're dealing with a, a limited number of strategic um, key performance indicators that allow us to keep a pulse on the operation and uh, to manage and watch, uh, you know, with a handful of numbers, whether we're moving in the right direction or not. Um, it requires to be able to identify what our issues are and to resolve them as a group, as a team, and to come up with, uh, with uh, solutions for those things. Have your processes well documented and followed by everybody. And um, again, um, everybody in the organization needs to understand what the priorities are and what their role is in terms of, uh, of accomplishing that goal. Uh, for that to happen, we have to have trust. Uh, we have to be able to communicate well within the organization and there has to be accountability to every single person within a company in terms of what our expectations are uh, for, their, uh, for their part in accomplishing our goal. Um, the other thing that's really important from a traction standpoint, if I could talk about that again for one second, is, is to have, I won't call it constant, but periodic and regular reminders of what our goals are and, and what we're trying to achieve. Um, without that, everybody but everybody is going to forget where we're going. In fact, there's a lot of scientific proof that says that within a three-month period, we can forget about everything that we're trying to accomplish. And, um, and, and uh, w what happens is we need a, a, a quarterly refresher of, of where we're at and where we're trying to get to and, and even have that down to a weekly implementation uh, report on, on how we're doing relative to those quarters. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at our next, uh, our next page here. We have um, slide 16 gives a bit of an indication of, uh, of what would be a normal process for quarterly meetings. Um, the most important thing throughout a year um, of, uh, of trying to establish and, and fulfill annual goals is to have quarterly meetings and in the case of traction, uh, they'll, they'll set individual goals for everybody on a quarterly basis and they'll call them rocks. Uh, the, the analogy for that is uh, uh, you know, if you have uh, a bunch of rocks, uh, pebbles, sand, and water, and you try to put them into a glass, uh, you know, if you start with the water and the sand, you'll never get the pebbles in, and certainly the larger rocks will never fit in after you've got sand and pebbles in that glass. If you put the rocks in first, followed by the pebbles, followed by the sand, and ultimately the water, it all fits. So the, the, the moral there is that you want to make sure you get your important stuff done early, every single day and every single week. Those are the rocks. And those are the ones that change your business. They're, they're, they're not the, the daily routine, the day-to-day -day, uh, operational aspects of your business. They're the ones that are going to take your business to a different location and a different level. And, and, and uh, those are the ones that have to be accomplished. So, Everybody needs to work on the business as well as in the business. And um, if that's not clearly uh, stated and reminded to everybody, 
uh, we all fall into the trap of the day-to-day -day conundrum and uh, finding at the end of the year that we're right where we were at the start. So um, next thing on uh, slide uh, 17 is uh, we, um, we, we see Wickman having uh, a two-page, what he calls a vision traction organizer. And, and really, uh, you know, we talk about this being a simple system. Um, you know, here's a two-page operational plan that uh, to me makes a lot of sense and uh, I, I've seen it to be very impactful. Uh, by the way, if anybody's looking for a copy of this plan, uh, email me and I'll be happy to send it to you. I think you have my email coming up at the end and, uh, um, and uh, yeah, happy to fire it off to you at that point. Um, and again, what, what I like about this two-page plan is it, it really, really uh, allows us to follow through the sequence of, of you know, uh, what is our company makeup? Uh, how do we, uh, you know, how do we exist and how good are we in this, how bad are we in other things? It allows us to create a vision that's uh, realizable and, and, uh, and clear, uh, and then to develop a strategy and a roadmap of how we're gonna get there and ultimately have an implementation method that allows us to complete it. Um, so if we take a look at, again, Wickman's vision traction organizer, we see that he covers what should be our core values, what is the core focus of the organization, um, what is the 10 year target? Where do we want to be in a decade from now, in 2028? Um, very interesting question. I don't know if that many businesses actually have thought about what they want to look like in 2028. Um, and, then, and then what do we have as a marketing strategy? How do we uh, entice prospects to come to us? Uh, important question. Um, what is a clearer picture of where we want to be in three years? What do we really look like? Number of people, what are our sales, what products are we selling, what territories are we selling in, what demographics are we selling to, um, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, if we take a look at the next slide, um, it, it shows page two of the Vision Traction Organizer. And uh, here we develop some, some really crystal clear ideas of where we're going to be in one year time. Um, you know, it, it's a very, very short period in, in, in most businesses. You know, January 2019, before we know it, we're on it and it's right around the corner. So if we don't establish some really clear objectives, and goals of what we want to be uh, in 12 months time, very difficult to achieve it. Um, we, we take those goals we have as a corporation and we rinse them down to what's required to be accomplished in the next three months, the next quarter. And in the case of Wickman, he'll call them our quarterly rocks. An example might be that uh, we want to uh, expand our territory from uh, uh, from uh, the Niagara Peninsula, the Niagara region, into Hamilton. Uh, by the end of uh, this year, uh, uh, January 2019, we would like 15% of our revenue to come from outside of Niagara region, where now 100% of it comes from inside Niagara. That would be a clear rock. Um, and, and what do we need to do in the next three months to make that happen? It, might be identifying a good uh, marketing strategy to go after the Hamilton market. Uh, it might mean uh, setting up a, a salesperson designated for the Hamilton territory, whatever that might be. Um, so that's an example of how uh, you know an annual goal could be rinsed down into a quarterly target. Um, next, we have a bunch of things that we already know are issues and barriers to achieving that. Um, maybe uh, we don't have enough money to hire somebody for the Hamilton market at this point in time. Um, maybe we don't know enough about the Hamilton market to know where to start. Should we start, uh, you know, uh, above the mountain, below the mountain, um, Dundas, Ancaster, uh, Stony Creek? Uh, you know, what uh, what are we what are we talking about in terms of that? Um, so one of the issues could be our our ignorance of Hamilton. Um, so, so that might be something we'd want to discuss. Um, so that, that kind of takes us there. Um, we have a question that's come up from Kevin Jacoby. Um, uh, glad to see that Kevin's uh, here and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Kevin's question is, uh, are the slide numbers in the bottom right corner of the display? 
<laughs> if so, the wrong slides are being shown. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, that's been resolved. And um, thank you, Kevin. Um, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, everybody's uh, watching this for the first time and uh, or we're doing this for the first time. And um, thank you for that pointer because we may have the wrong slides up. But it looks like we have it sorted out now. Um, great. Let's go to slide 19, and uh, and it may not show up as slide 19, but it's one that's entitled uh, "Some Niagara Examples." Um, uh, you know, um, th these are uh, four examples that I could think of that uh, top of my head um, of companies in Niagara that have implemented um, uh, you know a traction type program, a business operating system, in, in the last uh, I'll say three years. Um, some of them more recently. Um, and, and they've seen dramatic uh, effects with regards to uh, putting together a proper operating system. Um, one that comes to mind is a technical services company with about uh, 45 to 50 employees. Um, uh, they, they have a clear communication process of their annual goal, goals and, and how everybody has a role to play to make sure that we can attain it. Um, they attract and retain top talent in a very, very competitive market that they find themselves in. And they do that by, uh, by clarifying their core values to all candidates that are coming uh, or that are thinking of, uh, of applying for a job at this company. And they also have a very clear communication of their strategic direction. That alone uh, can allow you to have an upward spiral in terms of bringing on more A players into your company and all of a sudden you can sit back and uh, you've just created a monster where the organization is uh, actually fulfilling uh, I its role on its own without, uh, without your input. Um, I it's really interesting on an A player, B player, C player discussion too. Um, when you take a look at uh, top performers, uh, top graduates from, from our uh, post-secondary institutions. Um, we, we think about it, if we want to call them A players, uh, do we think they want to work for an organization that's filled with B and C players? Uh, uh, probably not. In fact, it probably won't take them very long to realize that there aren't a lot of other A players working here. I'm not sure I like this place. And uh, it'd make it very hard to keep an A player working there. The other thing that happens is if you have a B player, heaven forbid a C player is a manager and they're hiring people, uh, there may be a strong reluctance for them to hire an A player. They might see their job uh, uh, at jeopardy with, uh, with, uh, with an A player uh, working for them. So they have a tendency to hire Bs and Cs themselves. Um, and, and lastly, if you have an organization that has a lot of A players in it, guess what? They attract other A players. You don't even have to do the work. And if you have an A player prospect coming to be interviewed and looking at your organization and they see it just full of other A's, uh, all high achievers, all of a sudden that's where they want to be as well. So um, it's interesting how uh, you know, something as simple as a clear strategic direction and uh, a clear communication of core values and what your organization is about and why we exist and, and, and why we come to work every day uh, can have a very profound effect on who decides they want to come to work for you. Um, another example is a, uh, is a product manufacturer. And um, you know, here we have uh, an organization that in the last three years has grown from $2 million to $6 million in revenue. Uh, and guess what? They had a clearly stated and monitored growth strategy to achieve that. Kind of interesting. Um, they, they have, uh, you know, a, a, a close management of strategic development and execution and uh, a, a very strong uh, quarterly process of getting together and establishing what they want as goals for the next three months. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, we talk about um, owners passing on um, the organization to, to others. Uh, this is a case in point where uh, the owner, founder of the organization isn't even involved in day-to-day -day operations anymore. Uh, it's a situation where the management team has been able to take on sufficient accountability to, uh, to create strategic direction and growth uh, on their own. Um, another example is a software developer. 
um, put in a traction process and within the same year uh, actually had a 50% uh, improvement on their best profit year. In addition to that, they, for the first time in 15 years, uh, created a new product platform um, that they're launching into a vertical uh, market and, um, and, and uh, did all that, uh, increased profits and, uh, and launching a new product altogether. A uh, last example I have is a high-tech firm that in the last two years has actually grown from seven to 30 people. And um, again, here it's really interesting. Talking to the owner the other day, uh, he said, yeah, if I'm going on Indeed.com or somewhere like that to post a new job, uh, the first thing I'll do before even talking about the job description is I'll, is I'll list our core values. And um, what happens there is that those that aren't interested in those core values will stop reading the job description and, uh, and go bounce into another, uh, another uh, uh, posting. Uh, those that are really uh, attracted to those core values will read that job description very carefully and see whether they'd be the right person for that job. And um, it's, it's had great results. Uh, let's see, we have, um, uh, we, have another, uh, uh, we have another question here on live chat from, uh, from Susie uh, in Vancouver. Um, you mentioned uh, post-secondary. If a business operating system is so good, why isn't it taught in colleges and universities? Well, that's a, a really good question, Susie. Um, when I studied business, the, the closest thing we had to it um, was uh, a, uh, a last year course called Policy. And uh, Policy took all the functional uh, studies, uh, be it uh, production systems, uh, human resources, marketing, finance, and put them all into one big vegetable soup to come up with a policy strategy. Um, you know, I, I don't have any clear answer for why uh, it isn't looked at other than the fact that a complex operating system can't get adopted. And I think post-secondary institutions are trying to have their students understand the most they can, uh, to the highest degree of complexity that they can absorb, and uh, thereby measure their ability to, uh, to understand and comprehend that. Um, but what's interesting in day-to-day -day applications, particularly for small, medium-sized enterprises, is quite frankly, you know, the expression, less is more. And, and it's really true. Um, simplicity, clarity, and having less can actually result in greater achievement. So perhaps one of the things that, uh, that, that is missing is, 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 is that implementation capability implementation tactics uh, that, uh, that perhaps should be a course taught in, in school. And, and with that, I, I believe there would be a cake mix there that would be uh, good enough to, to, really, uh, to really gel. Um, and I believe it's coming around. I think a lot of the work that's done in educational institutions today where they work within, or, or with, within organizations, uh, write reports on what they found in the outside world and, 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 and greater exposure to it, uh, brings around such topics. And um, so, so I do see it on the way. Uh, certainly when I studied business, it, it wasn't there at all. But thank you for that question, Susie. Um, yeah, so, um, so that uh, uh, brings us to, you know, uh, slide 20 where, where we talk about, um, you know, what does an organization really get when they, when they finished implementing a good business operating system? Um, they get accountability at every level of the company. Every person in the organization knows their number, knows their measure, and, and knows what they have to do not only to work in the business but on the business. What's required from an improvement standpoint within their work area all the way up to a functional improvement. Um, it, it creates a structure that uh, is an interesting organism at the end of itself. Uh, because not only does it run itself, but it improves itself. It, it repairs itself. And it identifies probably even greater growth than uh, the original business owner would have even thought of. So that's kind of interesting the way that comes about. Um, 
As mentioned earlier, it really, really allows you to have the ability to attract A clients, or I'm not A clients, but A candidates. Um, you've got an organization now where an A candidate comes into it and they see that they can roll up their sleeves and actually get a lot done uh, themselves and that, uh, and that their development is, 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 is really going to be crucial upon working for this company versus another where I'm given specific instructions of what to do every day. Um, and it provides clarity from the standpoint that less is more and understanding that less is more philosophy and how to use it uh, as a very powerful tool. Uh, again, going back to having laser focus in terms of what we want to accomplish over the next little while and to get that uh, magnifying glass to take the energy of the sun into a little point and, uh, and uh, cause it to burn a hole in a piece of paper. And uh, of course, last but not least is, um, uh, let's face it, businesses are here uh, to make money. Uh, they're, they're here for uh, people to uh, take an investment and to have a return on that investment. There's nothing to matter with that. It's how the world goes around. It's having sufficient motivation to risk your, your investment and, and perhaps lose it all, gamble it, uh, to, uh, to at the end of the day make profits. And uh, those profits in turn allow you to employ more people uh, to have more people engaged in your organization and to have success uh, within a multitude of, uh, of members within your community. So um, at the end of the day, that's, that's uh, certainly a better thing. Um, let's see if we have anything else. Uh, do we have any other questions here? Because uh, we're into a question and answer period right now where um, maybe we, um, we have some thoughts and uh, any any uh, critiques here? Uh, feel free to uh, to critique uh, what uh, what's just been said and whether it makes any sense to you or not. Um, let me see here. I, I I can think of some things that we could cover at this point, um, and um, let me take a quick peek here. Um, I had some other questions that did come up. Here we go. Here's some questions that are being uh, posed by uh, my audience uh, here, in, uh, here in the studio. So um, this is kind of good. Um, it w the first one that comes up is, um, is it not very time consuming to implement? And uh, where can a small business owner find time uh, beyond keeping their business above water? Um, very good question. Thank you for that question. Um, well, you know what? Um, if it's a business, even a one-person business, and we need to run it as a business, um, we need to use business tools. Plain and simple. Um, uh, if you have a lemonade stand and uh, you're not following any pattern or any vision or any strategy, um, uh, then you're probably not going to be able to keep the lemonade stand operating. Um, if you do have a strategy as far as which corner you're going to lo locate your lemonade stand in, uh, what uh, days of the week, what time of, of day you're going to uh, sell lemonade, uh, how you're going to uh, find a good recipe for a great lemonade and have people come back and buy more, then, then all of a sudden you can have this successful lemonade stand, let's face it. So in essence, if we want to be in business, it's pretty hard to be half ways in business and succeed at it. We really have to go all the way regardless of what size we are. And um, is this too time consuming? Um, you know, the, the, the other analogy we can use is, um, is, a, um, is, a, uh, is a wood chopper. Uh, we have a lumberjack that goes out every day and chops down seven trees. Um, his friends uh, chop down six trees, but they spend the first hour uh, sharpening their axe, and uh, he takes that first hour and chops down another tree. Well, very soon all of his compatriots have a sharp axe and he has a dull one. Well, we all know what happens. He ends up only chopping five trees, four trees, and three trees each day because he's never taken the time to sharpen his axe. So, in a way, do we have time to implement it? 
do we have time not to implement it? Can, can we can we can, can we can we live without implementing it? it? Is I suppose the big question to ask. Um, next thing we're looking at here is a uh, another question is uh, I'm looking to sell my company, um, but wonder if that should be postponed until completing uh, an operating system implementation. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, it's an interesting one. Um, certainly if uh, you have a buyer that's, uh, you know, feverishly wanting to pay uh, any amount of money for your company, uh, you know, at this point in time and you never thought you would sell it for this much, um, the, perhaps that buyer has another strategy in mind as to what they're going to do after they purchase your organization. Uh, you know, it, 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 it may be best to implement it and sell it immediately. Um, on the other hand, if you're wanting to maximize your selling price, um, think about it this way. Um, we, um, we, you know, if you, uh, if you ask a business owner, uh, you know, uh, how many weeks would you be away from, from, the, uh, from the business and have it to continue operating uh, successfully and profitably without you there? Um, and the business owner says, oh, it can't operate more than two weeks, the most three weeks, then what's it worth to another buyer if you hand over the keys and leave it? Uh, in essence, your business isn't worth a lot until it can be self-directed and self-operating. Because then and only then can, can it be worth something to an investor who wants to buy it. Um, so yeah, uh, can you sell it for more money uh, if you put an operating system in? Uh, absolutely, there should be a much higher price available for you. In addition, you might make a lot more profits over that period of time of growth as I've shown in some of the examples. Um, and all of a sudden you're into um, an exponential uh, gain in the price of your company. Um, another question we have here that's come up is, uh, does the implementation require a consultant uh, slash uh, facilitator or can it be handled by internal staff? Um, it can absolutely be handled internally within an organization. Um, the problem is you have to have somebody on staff who has enough time and, um, and enough uh, focus to dedicate to making sure it gets implemented and to study uh, a good uh, business operating system and become an expert at it and, uh, and implement it. Um, in a lot of cases, a facilitator uh, allows you to not have to learn by your mistakes and uh, can certainly speed up the process of, uh, of where you get to. Uh, but there again, there's no hard, uh, hard and fast uh, answer to that. Um, so, um, another question here is, what percent of profit uh, should an owner pay themselves? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, First off, if it's an owner-operator, let me say uh, uh, two things. One is that um, the, um, the, the operator, uh, uh, if an owner is a CEO of a company and a general manager, whatever you want to call it, um, they should be paid fair market value. So if they have to replace that job with somebody uh, off the street, um, then uh, they should be paying themselves that same amount of money. In addition to that, if they're the owner and the principal shareholder, they've invested uh, enormous sums in terms of, uh, of working capital, uh, equipment, uh, maybe land and building, and, uh, and so forth, um, that um, is an investor uh, investment, a shareholder investment, that should have a percent return on, on that investment. Um, if it's a very low risk uh, company and uh, profits come in, then maybe that investment uh, would be 10 to 15% return. Um, if it's a high risk venture and uh, you know, potential of losing all that money, then certainly I don't think you'd want to be investing your, 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 your hard earned money into something that wouldn't return less than 25, 30, 40%. Um, so, so it's really up to um, the nature of your company as far as what percent profit should be brought in. But most owners forget of the fact that they have to earn a salary as well as pay back the investor. Okay. Let's see if we have any more questions that have come in here. Um, 
No, I think we're good. Um, so, um, um, oh, here's a question that would just come in from Kevin. Um, how do you deal with uh, team members who don't buy in right away? Uh, what's, uh, what's an assimilation strategy, um, he's asking. Um, uh, again, uh, super question, Kevin. Um, I'll, I'll speak to the uh, traction system that I've helped implement. And um, you know what's really interesting about it is that when you have um, uh, a, a core values uh, uh, statement that's been created, and you pass it out to the organization, um, you can actually measure how everybody's um, falling uh, with regards to, uh, to this core values uh, measure that you've put up. And um, invariably, some people pop out of that that uh, score very low on, on your core values. Um, and if they know that, you know, this isn't an organization that, that, that meshes with my core values. So I have a different set of core values than they do. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of those people leave. Um, and if they don't leave, then, uh, you know, it's, it, it, there's a turnaround required for them to, 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 to join in with what's going on. Uh, or, or they might find it very difficult to stay within that organization. It may not be their fault. They, they may be a very different type of uh, personality and behavior style that just doesn't suit uh, the, uh, the majority or the group that's there. And, and uh, uh, that they could very well find an organization that's very suited to them and they can fit right in like a glove. Um, but um, I, I've seen some dramatic examples of, of going through the exercise of identifying the right people in the right seats and finding uh, without uh, hesitation uh, that there being a turnover in, uh, in staffing within, within the company um, and, and having the people leave that don't fit your core values. So, um, so that's about it uh, for today and I, I hope this was um, worthwhile, rewarding, uh, of interest to everybody. And um, if you have any more questions with regards to that, by all means, um, I think my email address is going to come up. If not, I am certainly in the chamber directory and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have with regards to business operating systems. And uh, um, all you business owners out there, uh, give it a try. Make more money. Why not?